That's Neil Armstrong about to put his foot on the moon. I was in awe at this. I was inspired by it. The effort it took from when Kennedy said we're going to the moon until we got there was extraordinary and inspiring. And it was much easier than what we have to do on climate. It's time for companies to make, in some sense, a similar leap from what they might do for themselves to what they need to do for all mankind. The theme of this talk is one giant leap for mankind, corporate climate leadership in the next decade. Um, and it's really about getting companies to move from the individual actions they're taking in their operations, and in some cases in their supply chains, to advocacy for policies that will actually scale all of those amazing solutions to the entire society, the entire economy, at the speed that we need it. Because this problem is all about speed and scale. And that requires policy. And success on the policy front is going to require advocacy, not just action. You know, companies setting targets and acting, there are these, these various um, initiatives and groups called RE100 and EV100 and REBA, the Renewable Energy uh, Buyers Alliance, um, all of which are about companies setting really ambitious targets for their operation. They've got another uh, three or four hundred companies, I think, that have committed to science based targets now. These companies are viewed, they are leaders, they're viewed as leaders, but holding up as leadership companies doing what is essentially the average of what the entire economy needs to do, to me that's not leadership, that should be a bare minimum. So it's time for companies to make the leap from science-based targets to supporting a science-based policy agenda. Okay, so you could say, well, we've made progress, but it certainly isn't enough. We need to move a hell of a lot faster. We need to hold on to the hope but we need to act with a much, much stronger sense of urgency if we want to have a hope of staying below one and a half degrees. So, and people like to talk about, well, okay, mid-century, we need to be net zero or net negative. If we don't do the 50% by 2030, we will have baked in three or four or five degrees of warming. And what we do from 2030 to 2050, it will matter. What we need is systemic change, and that's really the core of the point I'm trying to make tonight, that companies have enormous influence, and they are not using it to drive systemic change. They are acting in their own operations. Getting this, in my mind, requires policy. What I mean by policy is market rules that guide us with reasonable confidence onto the decarbonization path we need to be on. And those market rules could include a price on carbon, they could include clean energy mandates, they could include all sorts of other things. California, I think, actually has a pretty good suite of policies that don't have us quite on the path we need to be on, but getting pretty close. So what does that look like? I think what that means is companies need to be strong advocates, really champions for regional decarbonization, cons consistent with what the science requires, everywhere they operate, and ideally, everywhere they source, you know, the, the chairs and tables and stuff in their offices and the m equipment in their factories, but also the products that get manufactured maybe in a factory in Asia by some third party manufacturer that they then sell. They have influence where they've got offices, where they've got factories, where they've got suppliers, and they could use it to drive real change systemically in those places. They're not, mostly not today. And that's gonna take standing up to um, other companies, to utilities, to fossil fuel companies, to politicians who won't be happy about this. It's gonna take courage, it does entail some risk, but that risk can be mitigated, especially if we can get a bunch of companies to do it together. What I've observed is that in the world of sustainability, we basically push sustainability people to speak the language of finance. But climate is not just a financial problem, it's a moral and human problem. And most sustainability, many sustainability efforts are rooted in morality and humanity. So I think we need to get business to learn to speak the language of morality and humanity, not just get sustainability people trying to save humanity from the climate emergency to speak the language of finance. So I think we're at a moment in time on climate that is similar to where we were eight years ago on LGBT rights, where A, we need companies to use their influence, and B, the, the zeitgeist 
is such that the stars are aligning to push companies to do it. For those of you who are familiar with the, the literature and the lingo and the anti-bullying world, um, they need to move from being bystanders, so they're good, they're not doing bad stuff, they're not polluting, to being upstanders. They're helping get policies put in place that stop the pollution. So there's an enormous amount of power and influence pushing back against climate action. So in that situation, being a bystander is not neutrality, it's complicity. 